backwards and see if we can just turn around and get the hell out of here. Maybe go up a little higher, let's get a little bit of a run at it, so then we can back up and make that turn. Okay. We'll go up a little bit. I don't want to run over Sam. No, you won't run over. It's not going to get that high. We have been stuck plenty of times, and we don't want to get stuck. We won't even go that far. Yeah, this is not Colorado off-road snowworthy. Okay, all right, we're stuck. Oh, no. All right, Nathan, now last time I drove a vehicle off-road that was from a struggling Japanese automaker, at least here in America, it was the Suzuki SX4. And you know what happened to Suzuki. Bye-bye, Suzuki. So now we have the Mitsubishi Outlander Sport, <laughs> and I'm just hoping that this review is not the kiss of death for Mitsubishi. I don't think it is because this is one of their best sellers, and we're going to find out if it's any good in the snow. Coming up next. to think that the Mitsubishi Outlander Sport is pretty good looking. I put it right up there with the Mazda CX-5 in terms of looks. This is one of my favorite parts, the shark nose, badass looking front end, and they've recently updated it with a little extra chrome and they've changed a few things around. But coming on back here, this is all pretty much the same. The silhouette's the same. The rear, pretty much the same, but you know what? It's cute enough to get right there. Hey Sam, come on over here. Come on over here. I'm going to show you something. So, uh Check out this panel gap right here. Now this vehicle is made in Illinois, so this fits up right there very easily, but check this out. Up here, not so easily. So the gap is I'd say about maybe a millimeter and then it widens all the way to maybe three millimeters up here. This is not very Japanese. Look at this, look at this, it's, it's plastic. What, yes, what Nathan? That, that, that's look at the that. reason why. Look, if you guys remember the old Saturns, they used to have plastic fenders and solid hoods and the thing is is that expansion and contraction happens. oh expansion and contraction oh, oh come that's on what, that's what happened over there otherwise this is be... misaligned it's completely misaligned it's slightly misaligned because of the plastic fenders the good news is if you hit a squirrel it'll bounce right off the fenders <laughs> You know what? This thing's got a nice little growl to it. It's not exactly what I'd call fierce, but it's okay. Yeah, I agree with you, Nathan. It sounds um, smooth. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. good. Yeah, it's good. Not bad, not yeah. bad. It's peppy. All right, Nathaniel. Sorry. <laughs> how's, how's it drive in the snow with these quote unquote mud and snow seasons? What kind are they? Mud and snow season tires, Nexon? you mean? Nexon? Yeah, I've never <sighs> seen them before. There oh, we go. Don't high center it, dude. Oh, not high center. Look, I've got eight, almost 8.5 inches of ground clearance. And it's not too bad. There's actually a little bit of a, well, it's not a skid plate. It's just an aerodynamic plate underneath, but it's nice for sliding over snow. Of course, you're using it as a skid plate. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> Are hey, you rolling? Yes. Nathan! Don't get stuck, man! Don't Touchdown! Get, don't get stuck! Here, I'll, I'll push you out of here. Oh, I'm fine. Nestled deep down inside the engine bay is a two liter four cylinder engine. It's peppy, it puts out 148 horsepower and 145 pound feet of torque. So it Gets, you know, it gets around night. No, it doesn't really get around that nice, but it, it's okay. It, that's what I'll say, it's okay. What's it made it to, Nathan? What's the transmission? CVT. <coughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't hear that. What was that? 26 miles per gallon combined. That's what we're talking about. If you get the all-wheel drive version, which this is, then it comes with the CVT and a pretty good off-road system, actually. That's push button. And then you can also get this with a manual transmission, but only with front-wheel drive. Yeah. C V T continuously varying torture because it's buzzes. Yeah. It's yeah. doing pretty good actually. So the, there's this big button right here that says four wheel drive. I don't it, touch it. I'm not gonna touch it. <laughs> we don't want to get stuck back here. No, it's, no, uh, we really don't want to get stuck back here. It's pretty nasty. Oh, you're struggling, Nathan. 
This thing is struggling. Oh, 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 oh. we're high. We're close to high centering this thing. Yes, we are. So I'm just going to keep on going as fast as I as you dare. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, but you know what? It's doing okay. You got to admit. This is pretty damn deep. This is about a foot deep in some spots yeah, or more. Know, the only reason oh, shoot. It's, that's not looking good that's at all. That's not looking good. Uh, we're going to get stuck, Nathan. It's a much nicer interior, and it's much quieter. And frankly, it's quieter than the Mazda equivalent. What I like is that they put on the doors a good foam material, so it doesn't feel like you're hitting hard plastics. But there are some hard plastics here and there. Overall, I think it's a nice looking interior. It's not as classy as some other ones that are out there. Volkswagen seems to come in mind with the uh, Tiguan. Tiguan. Thank you. But in terms of comfort, the seats are comfortable. Back seats, pretty comfortable. Not a lot of leg room and okay headroom. So all in all, it's a small vehicle. There's a little place that opens up up here where you can actually turn it around. Okay, I hope so. The good news is uh, that it's small and light and there's three of us in here. So if we get stuck, we can push. The bad news is we didn't bring the Raptor. <laughs> <laughs> Which to pull us out of some major trouble. Yeah. But yeah. you know what? It's doing it. All right. And I got to admit, the all wheel drive system in here, yeah. it's allowing a little bit of slippage. And at the same time, um, it's keeping us moving. And this is very, very difficult snow to drive in right now. This is heavy grooves. Yeah. Oh, crap. Yeah, Almost. I'm not, I, I don't want to. How about if we try turning around right here? Right here. Okay. Right there. Go up the hill and then we'll have momentum to go down the hill. Up the hill? Yeah, right. And then it would always go down, and it's not going up this little tiny hill. Yeah, this is not Colorado off-road snowworthy. Okay, all right, we're stuck. Well, no, that's not fair to say. I completely disagree with that. This snow here would get a Subaru stuck. I don't think it get a Subaru stuck, but right, I, I agree with you, Nathan. It's, it's meant for... The snowy road. Are we in the reverse now? You want to go that way? No, because we have to go that way. Roman? Yeah. Well, like two, just stop. How are you going to turn around? Now, which way do you want me to go? That way to get out of here. Yeah. So I got to go in and I got to turn like this. Oh, like in and then that way. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm trying to do, okay. but it's the grooves won't let me. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? <laughs> there we go. There we go. All right. Okay. Now we'll back it up out of here. All right, you're doing it, my man. <laughs> The Mitsubishi's going, doing keep it. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Get the, if we can get back in those grooves, we can get the hell out of here. So I'm going to give this one to Nathan. Yeah, the Mitsubishi is small, but it's tidy. It's kind of the right compact size. I'm getting a little tired of every vehicle always being bigger than the previous generation. And this one is a nice size if you live in a city where there's not a lot of room for parking. It's also a nice size if you happen to be in the back seat. I'm pretty tall, obviously 6'2", but my head fits. My knees do kind of push into the back of the seat. But I could see myself sitting back here. This is a little bit too upright for my overall comfort but you know what for a small i say urban vehicle it does very well for the backseat occupants and speaking of big guys and small cars it's actually very roomy back here nathan it is very much so if the seats are down it has over 51 square cubic feet of storage space and that's not too terribly bad hey how much does this bad boy cost this one this particular model costs 25,850, and that is a nearly loaded vehicle the only thing it doesn't have is the sunroof option which is actually more of a giant panoramic moonroof and leather oh and navigation it doesn't have that either but it has everything else and that's a pretty good price heated seats Yes. Cool seats? No. <laughs> it does, but that's not even an option. A subwoofer? Yes, yes, right next to you. It's yeah, massive. It's right massive. Yeah, this does provide a lot of value for your crossover dollar. But the question is, what does it sound like and how does it do off-road? Let's find out right now. Hell yeah. So we have three lessons we've learned from this Outlander Sport testing, right? Yeah. Number one, when it says mud and snow on the tire, don't believe them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not necessarily. Not unless you've actually used the tire before, which we haven't. Number two, Nathan's got momentum on his side. Momentum's awesome. And without that, we'd probably be stuck. And number three, we bring the long-term Raptor next time we do this. Yeah, we do. So we can go run and get it and get a snatch up. But look, I'm going to back this up 100% on really nasty snow, which yep. is very hard to pilot, yep. this little guy is doing really well. So 
the question, Nathan, is can the Mitsubishi Outlander Sport save Mitsubishi's bacon in North America? Maybe. They need to build more vehicles like this or better, frankly. Uh, but I think it's a good vehicle. And on TFL scale, buy it, lease it, rent it, or forget it, I give it two scores. This one I'm going to give a lease it to. I think it's great, but it's not as good as it could be. And if you're looking for a cheap vehicle, front-wheel drive with a manual transmission that gives you lots of stuff for the money, I say go ahead and buy it. And I'm going to give it two ratings as well. If you're an urban dweller, I say lease it. Otherwise, inexpensive, I say cheap, rent it. As always, this is Roman and Nathan saying thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye. All right, Nathan, tell them. Come on. You have a confession. Tell them. Oh, uh, yeah, I was wrong about the measurements. It's actually 49.5 cubic feet with all the seats folded flat. Really? I thought the other one, you know, the squirrel. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, I hit a, I hit a squirrel. It, it was a suicidal squirrel. Squir squirrel killer, squirrel killer! It jumped in front of the car. It was like, you know how the, the leap and go the other way? I'm just driving, and he leapt into the car. And, yeah, and blame it on the suicidal squirrel, why don't you? I don't know if he's dead or not. He might just have a really bad headache. Maybe he was laying on the ground sleeping. That's what I was talking about, not the cubic. Who cares? Oh, and by the way, if you were wondering, this is 25000 $850. Oh, that too. <laughs> yeah, that's the important part. All right, there are all our corrections for today. <laughs>